Manny Osborne parody. I've been told his Super G is good, but I wasn't told it was that good. Half a second ahead on the top part of this course. A superb run by the Canadian. World Cup action is back in Lake Louise for the first time since 2019, and I sat down with a Canadian cowboy that knows this chorus better than almost anyone else, Manny Osborne Parody. What is so special about Lake Louise? Uh, yeah, I mean, man, I've skied, I have skied Lake Louise so many times, and you know, the nice thing for, for a lot of the athletes is there's a North American circuit that goes to Lake Louise, there's also a stop there, so they get a lot of time on the course. And I think that for, for me, like what feels special is that it, it's, it is, it feels like it is home because you, we've been on it so often. And lots of times with speed, it's about wrapping your head around the fact that you got to go fast. You got to take some risk, you know, maybe be a bit dangerous and the more comfortable you feel on a track, you know, it, it just, it's less draining mentally. How important is this stop on the world cup circuit? Yeah, I mean, it's it's the first stop of the season. So everybody is just trying to find their pace. And it's it's as important. I mean, there's 10 downhills, there's six super G's. So, you know, if, if we take downhill, I mean, it's 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 10% of the season, right? So it is just as important as all the rest, but nobody really knows how they're doing, you know, and 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 it is like some people excel really, really, really fast in the beginning of the season. And some people take time and and, uh, you know, it's just really trying to figure out, you know, how, we, how your training was in the summer and how you can relay and parlay that into the races. First stop on the World Cup circuit, do you think there may be any foreshadowing with the results we see this weekend and what we may expect to see in Beijing? No, absolutely not. Whoever, I, I don't think so at all. Uh, February is a long ways away. And, you know, there's going to be certain people that that are are trying to peak in February and they might really not be at the peak of their game right now. And they may take training blocks early December when there's a gap in the race season and they'll really push hard then. So we might not see I'd never say never, you know, I mean, good skiers are good skiers and they, they can excel any day of the year. But uh, I think the the people that you're going to start seeing in Valgardena, Bormio, early December, those are the guys that are, are really going to be peaking for the Olympics. Who should we look out for on Team Canada? Well, rumor has it that Broderick Thompson won every single training run in Nikiska the last week. So he was undefeated. Uh, I think they trained with the Swiss, the, fr the French team. Uh, so that's great. I mean, it's not a full World Cup downhill there but it's a tough track and I mean Broderick is coming back from a two-year injury that he crashed in Nikiska as well so um you know I think that I, I, of all of all the racers right now I think he's got a really great shot at breaking into the top 30 and being a contender every weekend you know being a being a name that we can start remembering so what are your predictions for this weekend Predictions, I would say, you know, an amazing race would be if we could get three to four guys in the top 30 at this race. It's a young crop of athletes. I think we're average age of 24 now, which I would say the average age of the World, of the World Cup is about 29. So, you know, it's a young, young group. And so we need to support them. You know, podiums can happen and out of the blue podiums can happen. But I think supporting, supporting our crew with, with real expectations of, personal bests and top 30s, uh, those are big accomplishments. It, 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 they just, you know, perspective, sometimes we always think about podiums. Uh, but I think if we, if we get a good group of people being in the top 30, you know, there could be podium contenders by the Olympics, you know, uh, confidence trumps skill and it's about building up their confidence for, for the Olympic games and then throughout their, the rest of their career. You have had such a formidable career. You're taking one last run in your in your backyard, Lake Louise. What can we expect? Uh, well, I've been quite busy on snow with a young group of girls that uh, that have come over from uh, Ontario to ski, and I'm bringing them over. We're gonna do uh, we're gonna do the inspection on the Friday day's race, and I have been looking around for for costumes to wear. We'll see. I mean, lots of costumes that, you know, you get going 120, you flaps around a lot. So I'm trying to find a, a costume that doesn't flap around that much. And it, it has been tricky. Uh, but, uh, 
Yeah, you know what, just just an honor to stop at all my coaches and, you know, Johnny Cachero will be on there because he's the head coach of the Canadian team, uh, a, a person that I roomed with for a long part of my career. So just to say hi to the coaches, uh, you know, a little farewell, uh, you know, I, you know, Blake Louise also tried to take my leg a couple of years back. So, you know, say adios to the, the race course and um yeah, also just a really nice sentiment uh, to the volunteers and all their hard work and sponsors. Plus, you know, my my son Toby never got to watch me race, so it'll be the one race that he gets to be at. And my daughter's very excited. She was at in Aspen at a race where I placed fourth, but she doesn't quite remember. And uh, so just an amazing time to have my whole family there and do one last hoorah.